All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this week's question. This comes from Salty CD, and his question is how to hide APIs, .env or .ignore, etc. Now, I had a small discussion with him just to make sure that I understand exactly what he was asking, and he is asking basically how can he hide API keys, both in the source code and in the browser. So for the sake of ease, I'm going to be talking about this in the context of a React application. That way I can show you guys some examples and most of you are pretty familiar with React. If not, that's fine. You'll still understand what I'm talking about and I'm gonna show you examples as I go through, but I just want to use React because that's what most people are familiar with on the front end, at least my viewers most likely are. So let's talk about two quick concepts. We have .getignore. .getignore is basically a file where you can list files and file patterns that you do not want to be pushed up to your Git repository. Let's say you have a file and in it is a app secret and you do not want anybody to know this app secret. And so you push all of your code in your directory to your remote repository, but you don't want this specific file to go there. So instead of manually having to exclude this file every single time, you can create a file called .getignore. And in there you can list that particular file and it will ignore that file whenever you push changes or make commits. And typically, especially if you use Create React App, this is actually going to be included in your project by default. And I will show you what that looks like right now. So over here, I've got a React application. It's very basic. It's just got one component, which is the app component. And as you can see, there is a git ignore. Now, when I click on this git ignore, there's a couple of files here that are being um, ignored. And you can see yarn debug, npm debug. This little asterisk here is a wildcard character and will match any characters at all. So npm debug.log and then any characters that follow afterwards. And we are ignoring node modules. We're, we're ignoring uh, .pnp uh, coverage, which is going to be if you run tests, you know you'll get some like information regarding your um, test coverage. And we're ignoring build and DS store. This is all by default and comes default with create react app. So if you use create react app, this is going to be in your application by default if you're using react. Now, if you're not, you can very easily just create a dot ignore file inside of your directory and um, it will work just fine as long as you create a git repository in that directory. So as long as this git ignore file is in your git directory, when you initialize it, you don't have anything to worry about. This will work properly. Okay, so this works good for when you're trying to ignore specific files that you don't want to be pushed to a remote repository such as GitHub. But there's also the problem of not wanting the variables to show up in your browser. Now, one thing that you can do, so let's go to app.js here and I've got a little setup already. I'm going to actually create a variable within my component here. I'm gonna call, call it const app secret. And I'm gonna set it equal to abc123. And then I'm just gonna have a little button. And inside of this button, I'm just gonna literally console.log app secret. And let's save it and let's go ahead and demo something. So as you can see, I have my browser open over here and I've got a little button that says click me. When I click it, it logs ABC123 and that's great. Obviously you're not gonna be logging a secret key inside of your app. This is just to show you guys an example. So something that I'm gonna show you is I can actually go over here to the sources tab and I can go inside of static and inside of here, I can click main.chunk. Now I'm going to make this bigger so I can see it. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Okay, as you can see, you can literally see the component in here. You can see it says app secret equals ABC123. You definitely don't want that. So obviously putting this directly in your source code is a problem in the first place because this is gonna end up in your GitHub repository because you're probably not going to ignore an actual component that is part of your application. You're gonna want that in your Git repository. So how can we get this variable outside of our source code? Well, one way is to actually use a .env file. So in here, I've created a .env file and I've created a variable called React App Secret Key. And in React, you have to have this React app appended to the front of it uh, for, or else it will get ignored. So I've got this React App Secret Key and I've set it equal to ABC123 and that is in the root of my, my uh, project. So at the same level as the source folder and dot env. And when you run npm start, it's gonna compile this and add this to your process dot env. Now, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, in here, I can just delete this now, and I can come in here and access that variable by saying process dot env, and specifically react 
app secret key. That is what we named it, React App Secret Key. So we can access it by saying process dot env dot and then the variable name. Now I'm going to save it, but you have to recompile the program. If you add the environment variable, you have to recompile it. So you just stop the server and run npm start. And now I can click this and you can see it successfully still logs ABC123, even though we are not, we don't have ABC123 defined in here. So now what this allows us to do is it allows us to push our code to GitHub and the code will not have the secret key inside of it because inside of the git ignore, we would want to put uh, .env. So if we put .env inside of here, just put a forward slash inside of here, now git will ignore our .env file, which this is where this variable is being defined, which means we don't have to worry about our ABC123 being inside of our source code. However, here is a giant misconception. This is still 100% visible inside the browser. If I go to sources and I go to static and then main.chunk and I, you see, I'm not defining it here, but it still transpiles to ABC123. So that's not good. If this is something that you do not want anybody to see, you don't want to have this referenced inside of your front end application whatsoever. So to solve this, what you wanna do, if you have a app secret that you absolutely must keep secret, you do not want to have a reference to that whatsoever on the front end. Instead, what you need to do is any logic that uses that particular variable, that needs to be on the back end. So let's say you have a particular API key and this API key needs to be kept a secret because you don't want anybody using that API key to make calls to the API on their own. You want to take that API key and any logic used to make calls to that API using that API key should be on a server. So any calls you make to the API using that API key should be in, for instance, a Node.js server on the back end, isolated from the front end. So for example, let's say you want to call a API with that particular key. Put the HTTP request inside of a function in a Node.js server on the back end somewhere where nobody can see it and make a call from your front end to that. The function on the back end will then use that API key to make the request. The request will come back to that Node server and then the response will be sent back to the front end. So what you're essentially doing is creating a proxy. Now, one thing that I wanna say is you don't really have to worry too much about this unless it is a severe problem. So if you know it's a serious problem and you absolutely cannot let this API key be seen, then you're gonna to wanna to put it outside of the front end. You do not want this on the front end. You want it on a server somewhere. Any logic involving that needs to be on the server. But a lot of the times API keys aren't as secret as people feel like they are because you can create security rules on the back end or on the API, I should say, that um, make it to where only the applications that you explicitly define are able to access that API. And one of the terms that we're gonna throw around here is called origin. So if you've ever worked with APIs, you probably have heard the term cores which stands for cross origin resource sharing. Now, the thing about cores is that it protects you from this particular issue. See, let's just say you have a website, it's called www.example.com and you have an API key. And on that API, you have it configured to requests from that particular IP address, that server name. And only requests from that server name can access this API, but you still need that API key. What that means is you can be on Postman or you can be on a different web app using the same API key, trying to access that API server, and it will not accept the request. It will deny the request because of course. So as you saw, git ignore is very simple. You just simply add the paths to the files and the directories that you want to ignore. Make sure you put it in a file called dot git ignore at the root level of your directory in the git repository. The dot env file is very easy to understand as well. You can declare variables inside of there. In react, you have to put react app at the beginning, and then you can access those variables by using process.env. But again, if you want to use an API key that you don't want anybody else to ever see, you make sure that you don't have it in the front end at all, and you put any logic required to use that on the back end, and you can use a proxy server to handle any of that logic between the API and the front end. And if anybody gets a hold of your API key, I mean, odds are you've got it set up on the API to only accept requests from the origins that you've specified. And there are still ways for them to get around that. They could spoof the origin. But again, if it's super important that your API key does not get seen by anybody, please put it on the back end. 
and that will keep you safe. I hope that answers your question, Salty CD. Um, if you've got any more questions, please put them in the comments so next week I can answer yours. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.